What's up, Cal gang? All right, welcome back to Physics 2. All right, so we got this problem here. So let's read it out. It has a ball that's dropped. Um, it has this many electrons on it, right? So it says that we have four times 10 to the eight excess electrons. So let's go ahead and write down that Q is equal to four times 10 to the eight, but then it multiplied by the charge of an electron. So we're gonna label that E minus. So then at the bottom of the shaft, uh, it, it falls 125 feet, and then at the bottom of the shaft, it enters a, a magnetic field of 0.25 teslas from east to west. So let's draw that. So let's just pretend that like this is the bottom of our field. Yeah. And then so it goes from east to west, right? So our electric field, here's E. It's from east to west. Or not E. Our magnetic field, B, right? This is B. And we said earlier it's equal to 0.25 teslas. Okay, so what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the electric field, right? So find the magnitude and direction of the force. No, no, we're finding the force, okay. So if we're trying to find the force, we're gonna use the formula. Our formula for this is gonna be force is equal to Q velocity cross with uh, our magnetic field. So this formula here, right? So we have B, we need to find B, and we have Q, and we're trying to find force. So let's go ahead and do this, right? So. Let's start with the V. Right, so V, we're going to use the kinematics equation, right? So we're trying to find the velocity of the ball when it's at the bottom. So we know it falls 125 feet, so we can use a kinematics equation. So that kinematics equation is going to look like this. Velocity final squared, is equal to velocity initial squared, plus 2 gravity distance, right? You know this from physics 1. This is a useful formula. We're looking for velocity final. It's dropped from zero velocity, so there's no velocity initial. So velocity final is just going to be the square root of two times gravity times the distance, which is 125. I didn't write that down, but. So we're gonna find the velocity final, and we need to write this as a vector, right? Because in our formula, we need velocity as a vector. So if we drop this straight down, it's gonna have no x component. Let's say that our field looks like this, right? This is x, this is y, this is z, so it's gonna be falling straight down, so it's gonna be zero in the x, and zero in the y, but whatever it is in the z. So it's gonna be zero i, plus the zero j, but then it's gonna be minus whatever that velocity is, so this, number gives you uh, 49.5 uh, k meters a second, right? So I guess we don't need this anymore. Okay, so we have everything now, right? So let's go ahead. Uh, so we wanna, well, you can multiply this Q before or after we do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and multiply Q right now. So we know that Q is equal to four times 10 to the eight electrons. Okay, so then we're multiplying the amount of electrons by the charge of each electron. So each electron is a negative charge, right? Negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 is the charge of each electron. So if you multiply each electron by each charge of the electron, you're gonna get a number, which is going to be, uh, so then this is gonna give you negative 6.41 times 10 to the negative 11th coulombs, which is the charge on uh, the total charge of the ball, right? So then we're gonna multiply Q by B just to get this whole thing by itself. So then QB, that's just gonna be this number, multiply that, so it'll be zero I plus zero J. And then a negative times a negative is gonna give us a positive 3.17 times 10 to the negative nine K. And this is gonna be like a Newton column, or Newton, or column meters per second, which is not that important. So then all we have to do is take the cross product of this. So then F is equal to uh, QB cross with B. So I, J, K, we said QB is 0, 0, 0.3.17 times 10 to the negative ninth. B, we know the magnitude of B is 0 0.25 Tesla, and we know that it's going east to west. So we label this X, and then this is Y, to say that it's going from uh, positive X to negative X. So it's gonna be just acting in the negative X direction. So we can say this is negative 0 0.250, and then 0 in the y, 0 in the z. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So then we just have to compute this cross product. So of course this is going to give you 0i, just because this times this is 0. So then we're subtracting j. So from here it's going to be 0 times 0, so 0 minus, so then it's going to be this times this. So minus negative 0 0.25 times 3.17 times 10 to the negative 9. Right, J, and then plus K, K is gonna be zero too because 
0 minus this times 0, 0. So then if you uh, do this, it's going to give you 0i. It's going to be minus 7.93 times 10 to the negative 10 j plus 0k. And of course this is force, so this is in newtons. So then if you want to say the magnitude, the magnitude of the force is just going to be the positive version. That's going to be equal to 7.93 times 10 to the negative 10th, right? Newtons. And which direction is this, ask, dire or is this directing? Well, it's going negative in the y direction. So if we take this, we're going to say north, east, south. So it's pointing in the south direction because it's going down in the y. So south. And there we go. That's our answer. So that's how you solve this kind of problem. Uh, this one's just kind of a plug and chug question, but you have to know where to find your values and you do a little bit of kinematics. So there you go. Uh, good luck on your physics homework, guys. See you in the next one.